who gave the following triangle? In this image, what we see is that there is a triangle that depicts the child patient, the family, okay, the dentist, and the society as a whole in the center of this triangle. So this is an example of the modified periodontic triangle. Okay, now the periodontic triangle, the periodontic triangle was first given by Wright in the year 1975. Okay, so he gave this in order to explain the relationship that is seen uh, in periodontics. Okay, because as we know, the patient doctor relationship in adults. Okay, for an adult patient, it is a very linear relationship. That is, there's an adult patient who comes to the dentist. Okay, the dentist only has to communicate the treatment plan and the uh, diagnosis, etc., directly to the patient. The patient is the one, or the adult is the one who's going to take the uh, decisions for himself and who is going to consent to the treatment. So, this relationship between the adult patient and the dentist is linear. Okay, but this is not the case for a Periodont in case of periodontics, because in periodontics, the dentist has to communicate with the patient who is a child. Okay, so the dentist has to communicate with the patient who is a child. Okay, he also has to communicate with the parents because the parents are the one who are going to consent for any treatment procedure that needs to be carried out on their child. Okay, so this relationship is not linear. This relationship is actually a triangle. Okay, and the arrows in this triangle are working both ways. Okay, this shows the communication. So the communication is not one way. That is the dentist is not just telling the parents what needs to be done. In, instead, he is discussing with both the parents. So it is important for the dentist to have open communication with the parents to explain to them the treatment plan that needs to be carried out in the child. And also the dentist needs to have open communication with the child itself because he has to make the child comfortable enough to receive the treatment that has been planned for him. Because as we know, most of the children who do come to the periodontic clinic, okay, they usually have some of the other fear associated with the treatment. So it, it becomes very essential for the dentist in order to have in order to have the cooperation of the child to first make the child feel comfortable. Okay, which can only happen with open communication between the dentist and the child. So this is very important. Also, the child is placed on top of the uh, triangle or kept at the apex of the triangle because he is the one who is the sole focus of the dentist as well as the parents because they are coming for the treatment of the child. Okay. Now, this periodontic triangle that was given by Wright was later modified by McDonald in the year 2004. Okay, so this triangle that you see here, where there is a modification where society was placed in the center of the triangle, this was actually given by McDonald's et al. in the year 2004. Okay, so they could sometimes even ask you the year, so that is also important to note. Okay, so in his modification, he introduced society as well into the whole, into the picture. This is because whatever treatment that is going to be planned for the child or any methods of management of the child, especially uncooperative children who require uh, management in the clinic, it needs to be done in a way that is acceptable to society. So we have to consider uh, because it is a litigious type of a society that we are functioning in. Okay, it is important because these uh, factors are also going to influence. Okay, so that is why society was also placed in the center. So that is whatever treatment protocol or whatever management protocols the dentist is going to follow is something that should be acceptable to the society as large. So this is the modification that was given by McDonald et al. Okay, Wright is the one who gave the first periodontic triangle and McDonald's is the one who actually modified this triangle.